I teach a leadership training course called Perfect Leadership, and uh, it really is a perfect type of leadership. If you execute the tenets of this leadership scheme, if you will, uh, it's almost impossible for something to go wrong. And little do people know when I'm up there teaching it that it's almost 100% focused on the example Christ sets. And uh, so when we go on the field and we're trying to teach guys, you know, we're trying to teach everything that we believe in. I believe that if you lead like Christ, that you're going to get results like Christ. He did miraculous things. As coaches, you know, God puts us here with the hopes that we're going to do some things for some people that are in need. My son Anthony is 11 and autistic. I love Anthony, you know, he's... Uh, Anthony has two obsessions. His two obsessions are football and Star Wars. He's like a brother to me, you know, just like the rest of the players on the team. Um, Anthony's first game, his first actual experience was actually here with the Silverbacks. And they took him out on the field and he has just felt so much more connected. Super easy to get along with because he, he loves the game with a passion like I love the game. So, you know, that, that part was easy and I just, I don't know, I felt like we could really, you know, change his life a little bit by introducing him to a team that he could kind of be a part of. Football was not something that we ever thought socially that Anthony would be able to do. Me and my wife decided to start our own team to fulfill some of the dreams. Um, we've had doctors tell us to tell him, you know, to you know, find something else. Me and my husband are youth ministers um, because there is so many troubled kids um, out here in the world today. It's every single player on this team and all of them ask how Anthony is doing um, and they all check in to see how things are going. You know, it's, it's sort of life changing so that was the whole intention and I, I think we've accomplished it. So. When, they took the, when they took Anthony out on the field, it was an absolutely beautiful thing because it's like he had been waiting for it his whole life. Come on. You know, Javen is just one of the examples of some of the magic that, you know, some people in the stands don't see or something that you're not going to be able to capture, you know, with this camera. It's like you taking baby steps trying to walk again, you know what I'm saying? The grind is hard, you just got to be 100% focused and you got to be dedicated. Uh, Javen was a, an incredible high school athlete and uh, his dad uh, got incarcerated uh, when he was eight years old and he missed the prime of his son's life. He was incarcerated so throughout my peewee playing in a middle school and high school career like he wasn't there he just heard by word of mouth. On that game he was released that day and he was able to see his son play football. But for him to see me play for the first time you know what I'm saying as an adult like it was amazing. So Coach Jackson, knowing that his dad uh, was, was in the stands and, and hadn't seen his son in 13 years, not only let him play defensively, which he's a cornerback and that's kind of where his home is, but he brought the team together and he talked to the offensive line and some of the running backs who hadn't even really had a chance to carry the ball maybe once or twice and that was it and said, guys, we need to do something special. Playoffs, it was on a, a tall street right. I scored a touchdown. You could feel it in the air that night. It was an open and clear path. My, my, my lineman blocked for me. You know, they, they ran in the uh, end zone with me. We uh, went in the end zone like a family. To be able to be a part of that, and I couldn't even identify him in the stands, but I'm telling you, I the, the hair on the back of my neck was just, just sticking up. I felt the magic of that moment, and that that's priceless. So I am third is definitely that line, and uh, I stole it from Gail Sayers, which is a pretty good guy to imitate. Because at first I wasn't in shape when they got here, and they got me motivated to work out and actually go run and things of that nature. And now I'm telling other people to go work out 
and go get themselves in better shape because it's just whatever the circumstances might have been like for you to leave college that you didn't either graduate or that you didn't make it to the next level then you try it's like you just trying all over again i'm seeing the results of what they're making me do and i want everybody else to enjoy what i'm getting as well as long as we can stay together and we just want to open up an avenue for these guys to get what they want i'll take whatever comes a year ago at this time playing football was not in my vocabulary and right now I am starting, so whatever door God opens up for me, I'll take it. I'm working on making sure that I work my way back into playing indoor football. I'm trying to get to arena ball. Uh, they're helping me out with that. I want to. I, I would love to go to college. Uh, we try to help them in that area. Uh, you'll be very surprised of the things that's going on and how they're actually being pulled by their peers. Hopefully three to five years owning my own company, uh, doing well. It, it's completely a God thing, mm -hmm. how I was brought in to be able to help and um, just be part of the family and still be able to use uh, the skills that, you know, I, I, I grew up with in college and um, also use that to be able to help people. And just generally not had someone there to try to uh, point them in the right direction. So um, the semi-pro football world, um, is, a, is a great place for just this type of work. And believe that, you know, when you think you're in the darkest hour, you're not. You have people, you find the people around you who love you, who lift you up and support you. And really there are, are no excuses. Uh, there are no excuses in life other than looking at yourself and picking yourself up by your own bootstraps and, and getting things done. They carry it back to their families and try to emulate it and on the field they try to repay their brothers with the same thing. They repay their brothers with love. And if everybody has that attitude, you're gonna have some collective greatness.